Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'll show you step-by-step -step procedure of what you need to do to get the Google Assistant on any Samsung Galaxy Tizen OS smartwatch. For this video, I'll be using my Galaxy Watch 3, so let's get started. If it's your first time on my channel, please consider subscribing as I do regular videos for various smartwatches like this one, smartphone reviews, tech tutorials, and much more. Also check out the playlist tab to find dedicated playlists for Samsung smartwatches with more detailed videos like this one, so be sure to check it out. Before I start, Here's what you need to know. The steps that I'll show you in this video are pretty simple and anyone can do it either from the phone or a PC. You do not need to root any of your devices. And for me, it worked 100% and I hope it does work for you. You can try it out at your own discretion. I have linked the source forum in the description of this video. You can check it out if you need to. This process should work for any Tizen 4.0 plus smartwatch with speaker and microphone. So if you try it and it works for you, please comment down below so it can help out others. And lastly, this will not work for iPhone users. With all that being said, let's start by a brief explanation of the process. Then I'll show you all the steps and at the end, I'll compare the Bixby to the Google Assistant and let you guys know if it's worth to install it versus the Bixby. Now the best short explanation of this entire process is it's basically a bridge between the Google Assistant SDK that is the software development kit services. So you need to install the gassist.net app on your Android mobile device which gets connected to the Google Assistant SDK via the API that is the application program interface which would allow Google Assistant Cloud to connect to your mobile device. Now this gassist.net app on the Galaxy App Store is just a connection medium to the Android app. So yes, you do need a connection between the watch and the phone via Bluetooth or Wi-Fi for it to run. For now, all the apps needed for this process are available for free. So the first step is to install the gassist.net app on your smartwatch. You can search for this app on the Galaxy App Store developed by Camille. Once that is done, go on the Google Play Store and search for the same app developed by the same developer and with the same icon. So as explained earlier, the smartwatch app is basically a connection to this mobile app. Now step number two is what you need to pay attention to. Make sure to pause the video and follow along simultaneously so you don't miss out anything. You need to go on the cloud.google.com. You can either do it from your laptop or your mobile phone. For this video, I'll be using my mobile web browser. Now you'll be asked to create an account to get started for free if it's your first time with Google Cloud. Now keep in mind, Google Cloud services are completely free, but somehow Google will still require a credit card linked to your account. So keep a credit card handy. From my testing, any Canadian credit card will work. It's a pretty self-explanatory process. Just follow along, agree to all the terms and condition, and fill up all the details. One very important step is make sure you create an account with the same email address that is on your Android device. As if you create a cloud account with a different Google account than your mobile device, this entire process will not work. So keep that in mind. Now once you have created an account, you can go on the Google Cloud dashboard. I have switched to the desktop site versus a mobile web page as some of the options will be hard to find on a mobile site. Step number three, on the main dashboard, I have already created a project as you can see here, but you can create a new project by clicking here. You can name the project to whatever name you want. Step number four, go in the API and services. On the top, you will find an option to enable API and services. Go ahead and enable it, after which you'll be taken to the API library, where you have to search for Google Assistant API. You will find option to manage the Google Assistant API, wherein you will find an option to create credentials. 
Here is where you will get three options to fill out. A. Which API are you using? Make sure to select Google Assistant API, which is fairly obvious. B. Where you'll be calling the API from, which is also obvious from the Android device. And C. What data you'll be accessing. Make sure to select user data, which will allow you to access your user data like smart device control, etc., which I'll be showing you later on during this video. After this, step number five will be to go on the OAuth consent screen. I have already created G Assist for Watch 3, but you will find this form to be filled out. On the entire form, the only detail you need to fill up will be the application name and again you can name it to whatever you want and then you will find an option to save it at the bottom somewhere. Now for step number 6, go in credential wherein you will find create credential on the top. When you click it, you will get all these options out of which click OAuth client ID and you will get the option to select the application type. You can select Android or TV and limited input devices. Then give it some name, again whatever name you like and click create. This will create OAuth client. Now under credentials, you will find the OAuth client that you created with the name you entered above. Now when you click on the name of the client ID you created, you'll get all the details of the OAuth client ID and on the top you'll also get an option to download the JSON file. I know that's a lot of steps but they are pretty easy watching this video side by side. You can't go wrong and believe me, we are almost done. Step number 7, go in the file manager, I'm using the explore file manager. In the download folder you'll find the JSON file. Just go ahead and rename it to secrets.json. Make sure that you don't change the extension, it should be JSON. That's it. Now we have to link the mobile app to the Google Assistant API via this JSON file. So let's go in the mobile gassist.net app. Here is where you have to check permissions and allow to all the permissions. Once done, you will be asked to browse and find that created JSON file. After which you will be asked to authenticate. When you click it, you will get a pop-up to sign in to your Google account. Make sure to use the same Google account that you used for the Google Cloud. After which it will ask permissions, go ahead and click allow. Now you will get a code. Go ahead and copy it. This code is very important as it will link the mobile app to the Google Assistant Cloud API. Now go ahead and paste the code in the authentication section. Once you do it, the app should automatically authenticate, save credentials and configure the device. That's it, we are all done. Then go ahead and open the gassist.net smartwatch app, which will then ask you to allow storage access as well as microphone access. Now the app is all ready to use. When you swipe left, you'll get options like larger fonts, which is what I prefer, auto listen on start, which you can turn on if you want the app to automatically start listening once it starts. Next is auto listen on resume. Next is raw voice recognition test, make sure to turn it on. Next is sound effect and vibrate, I have turned both of these options on. Now you are all set to use the Google Assistant. When I click on the listen button, it will activate the Google Assistant on the Galaxy smartwatch. Now let me show you how to assign Google Assistant to this bottom right button. Go in the setting, advance, here is where you will find home key and you can go ahead and assign the gassist.net app to it. 
Now when you double press the home key, you will get the Google Assistant. By the way, if you like this watch face and the styling bezel that I have been using on my Galaxy Watch 3, I've done a separate video for it linked up in the card section. You can check it out once you're done watching this one. I personally find that the speech detection of Google Assistant is unbeatable compared to Bixby. It precisely detects what I want to say despite of my accent. Versus Bixby sometimes does not get it what I mean to say. I've done a full video review for all the features of Bixby and it's linked in the card sections. You can check it out once you're done watching this one. Google Assistant can solve math problem instantly. The answer is 625. It can answer trivia questions like this. You can even control smart home devices like light bulbs, TV, etc. And frankly, I use this feature a lot as I can control a lot of globe suit lights in my house and my TV right from the watch, which is super convenient. Now for your information, this Google Assistant is a third-party app on the watch, so it cannot control all the functions that Bixby can, as Tizen OS is still a closed system. Like Bixby can open apps, send text message, call a contact. Other than that, since Bixby is a system app, its result will be expressive versus on the Google Assistant, it's just text only for now. I also noticed that since the gassist.net app runs constantly in the background of the mobile device, it does drain the battery of the phone a little bit more, which you may not even notice. So finally, is it worth getting this Google Assistant over the Bixby? I will say for me, absolutely yes, as I have like 15 globe suit light bulbs in my house with other smart devices connected to my Google account like the TV, etc. And I can turn them on or off right from the watch, which is not even possible with Bixby at all. Yes, I agree that I cannot call a contact from Google Assistant, but I have set speed dial widgets for that. And for sending messages, I use this Google Keyboard app, which works like a charm, again better than the Samsung's built-in speech-to-text keyboard option. I've done a separate video for this, again it's linked in the card section, which you can check it out. So despite of all the above steps, I will definitely recommend you to try this out as to me it's very helpful and I use it on daily basis. So I really hope you found this video helpful. If you did, then please give this video a thumbs up. It really means a lot. Also follow me on my other social media network for early preview to upcoming videos and free giveaways. Links are in the description of all my videos. Thanks so much for watching and take care. I'll catch you guys in the next one.